This video includes a paid sponsorship from SPAN, but more on that later. Thanks to the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act, which incentivizes US battery manufacturing, Tesla can essentially build out the equivalent of free battery factories over the next several years. When coupled with Tesla's extremely efficient 4680 manufacturing processes, this should put Tesla in an amazing position to take advantage of these incentives and maybe even better than any other auto manufacturer. So let's dive into the details and I'll show you what I mean. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Just a few days ago, Tesla made a huge announcement that they're going to be expanding Gigafactory Nevada. And part of this expansion will include, of course, a semi-factory section, but also they're going to build out a new section of this factory to build 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year. At least that's the planned capacity to start with. All in all, Tesla estimates that expanding this factory will cost them somewhere around $3.6 billion and Elon Musk even mentioned at a recent event uh, talking about this particular expansion that it might even cost somewhere close to $4 billion or so. However, when it comes to the exact amount of investment that's needed just for the 100 gigawatt hour per year uh, cell factory section of the factory, we don't have that number. But obviously it costs Tesla less than $3.6 billion um, to put in this section of the factory. Now, when it comes to how much Tesla has invested in this factory in the past, at their Gigafactory Nevada expansion um, announcement event, they mentioned and put up this slide that Tesla has so far invested around $6.2 billion in this factory. As a reminder, as it sits today in the existing uh, footprint, Panasonic manufactures 2170 batteries in a portion of the factory, and then Tesla manufactures battery packs for their uh, Model 3 and Model Y, for instance. They also manufacture power walls and powertrains at this factory. But nonetheless, if you add together the $6.2 billion or so dollars that Tesla has spent so far, and the $3.6 billion plus dollars that Tesla plans to spend in the future to expand the factory, you get close to a total of around $10 billion in total once this expansion is done. And that includes everything, the entire factory from start to finish. Now, the reason I'm going down this rabbit hole right now is just to show um, how much Tesla really pays per gigawatt hour when it comes to investment for their factories. So for instance, if the entire factory with its expansion was for 4680 production, very likely this factory would actually end up being a Terra factory and would be able to produce around 1000 gigawatt hours of batteries per year based on a slide that Tesla put out at battery day. But if Tesla, for instance, can build a Terra factory for around $10 billion, um, that would actually be a very efficient use of capital. But nonetheless, since it's impossible to know how much Tesla would actually spend for a standalone 100 gigawatt hour per year factory, for my calculations, I'm just going to use a number and say less than $3.6 billion for a standalone 100 gigawatt hour factory. And the reason I say standalone is because that's what we're going to be comparing this to when it comes to the competition. Now at battery day, Tesla put up this slide, which demonstrated that with all the improvements from the 4680 battery manufacturing, they should be able to build one terawatt hour of batteries per year in a smaller footprint than in the past would have been necessary to build 150 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. They also mentioned that this led to a 75% reduction in the investment per gigawatt hour. Now to bring the 75% or so reduction in investment per gigawatt hour to life, I did some research and I looked up a number of recent projects that are in various stages of development from five other companies that are building out battery factories in the United States to see how much each one of these companies were investing per gigawatt hour to build out these factories so we can compare that to Tesla. I'm not going to take time to actually dive into every single one of the sources that I use for this data, but I will link to those below if you're curious to read each one of the press releases or articles that I got this data from. But nonetheless, if you look at this chart that I've created, you can see that if Tesla can build out a 100 gigawatt hour a battery factory for less than $3.6 billion, that means that that factory would cost less than $36 million per gigawatt hour when it comes to annual installed capacity. 
When you compare this to other large battery projects that are in various stages of development right now in the United States, you can see that the investment per gigawatt hour of annual production looks to be substantially lower from Tesla than the competition. Now to demonstrate just how much Tesla can potentially benefit from the IRA manufacturing credits, I think it's important that we dive into some of the details of this particular legislation. But before I do that, and before I talk about how that applies to Tesla specifically, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to SPAN for sponsoring this video. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel is beautifully designed on the outside and expertly engineered on the inside. SPAN was founded by a team of former Tesla engineers who helped develop the Powerwall, Megapack, and Solar Roof. In addition, SPAN's founder and CEO, Arch Rao, was head of products at Tesla Energy before founding SPAN and creating the award-winning SPAN Smart Electrical Panel. Remotely monitor and track your energy usage and gain circuit-level control with a smart panel from SPAN. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you let Span know that John from CleanerWatt sent you. In addition to the other incentives found in this legislation, like for instance, the tax credit of up to $7,500 for the purchase of a qualifying electric vehicle, uh, this program also incentivizes US manufacturing of battery cells and battery packs. These credits equate to $35 per kilowatt hour for battery cell manufacturing in the US and an additional $10 per kilowatt hour for battery modules, thus equating to a total of $45 per kilowatt hour for a company that manufactures the battery cells and the battery packs. When it comes to just how massive this is for a manufacturer like Tesla, for instance, for their Gigafactory in Nevada, they plan to build out a space for 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 battery production per year. And for every 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries that Tesla is able to build at that factory, they could potentially potentially see a credit of $3.5 billion, and for the equivalent of 100 gigawatt hours of finished battery packs, that credit could be around $4.5 billion. Now this credit officially went into place in 2023, and it continues on and starts to phase out in 2030 when the credit goes down to 75% of the amount, then in 2031, 50% of the amount, 2032, 25% of the amount, and then in 2033, the credit actually goes away. Now, of course, here in 2023, Tesla is not manufacturing that many batteries yet. However, according to um, Tesla's most recent conference call, their Q4 2022 conference call, Elon Musk mentioned talking about their partnership with Panasonic at Gigafactory Nevada. In the case of Panasonic, we're splitting the value of those credits. So the value of the credits this year will not be gigantic, but we think it probably will be very significant in the future. Zachary Kirkhorn followed that up with an estimate of just how much Tesla expects to get from this IRA program this year, and he estimated somewhere around $150 million to $250 million per quarter. And remember, this is just the beginning. The reason this is just the beginning is because these credits, once again, are being split between Tesla and Panasonic. I don't know the exact details of that, but I do have some theories, which I may talk about in future videos. Um, and when it comes to their 4680 production here in the United States, based on a late December 2022 update from Tesla on Twitter, Tesla at that point was at an annual 4680 production run rate of just a bit under four gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Now, of course, Zachary's estimates of up to $250 million of credits per quarter, that's really a lot of money still. However, that number I believe is going to look very small going forward as Tesla ramps up their factories. And as long as Tesla is able to build out factories for less than $4.5 billion per 100 gigawatt hours of installed annual capacity, at that kind of scale fully ramped up, this would potentially allow Tesla to recoup the cost of their investment in a factory many times over. For instance, if Tesla is able to manufacture 25 gigawatt hours of battery packs, finished battery packs, where they manufacture the cells and the packs, at that credit of $45 per kilowatt hour, that would be a potential credit of over $1 billion just for that limited amount. If Tesla is able to ramp that amount to 50 gigawatt hours in 2025, 75 gigawatt hours in 2026, and then from 2027 on through 2032, as that program completely phases out at that point, you can see in this example from 2024 to 2032, that could potentially give Tesla $27 billion of credits just from one factory fully ramped up. 
And as a reminder, Tesla is currently installing four battery lines at Gigafactory Texas. And from what I've heard, each one of these battery lines at Gigafactory Texas should be designed to produce 25 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So a total of 100 gigawatt hours per year for four lines. So once again, at that same scale, this factory would also have the potential to have billions of dollars of credits, maybe even somewhere around $27 billion of credits from this program. Even Tesla's pilot production line, which has a total design capacity of 10 gigawatt hours, while this factory is currently at an annual run rate of under four gigawatt hours per year, I think it's very possible that by 2024, this factory could be fully ramped up. And fully ramped up over these years, just that small factory alone could net Tesla over $3 billion of credits. And remember that these numbers that I'm talking about right now are just for two large 100 gigawatt hour per year factories and a very small 10 gigawatt hour per year factory. Tesla has much larger plans for the future, even including Gigafactory Nevada itself. For instance, at the recent Gigafactory Nevada factory expansion announcement event, Elon Musk made it very clear that this 100 gigawatt hours per year is just the start. And he said, quote, I think long term, we may do as much as 500 gigawatt hours. In addition, Tesla very well may have terawatt hour scale battery factories in the future. And they're aiming for somewhere around three terawatt hours of batteries being produced per year. Once again, 4680 batteries per year um, by 2030. When it comes to how much of this three terawatt hours of batteries per year that Tesla plans to build in the United States, according to Tesla's Q3 2022 conference call, Elon Musk made it very clear that their goal for US battery manufacturing is to produce um, one third of that three terawatt hour amount in the United States alone. So just think about the potential benefit of these credits as we start moving towards one terawatt hour of battery production in the United States. That's going to be huge if Tesla can get there. Now, so far I've talked about the benefits on the battery cell manufacturing and battery pack manufacturing. However, this IRA program also incentivizes uh, critical minerals and uh, electrode material manufacturing as well, which I think Tesla very well could benefit from as well. For instance, according to the text of this legislation, there's apparently also a 10% credit to the companies who produce the critical minerals uh, needed for batteries and a 10% credit for the production of electrode active materials. I don't know all the details of what's involved in that and all the requirements, but as a reminder, Tesla is currently building out a lithium refinery in Texas, and maybe that will qualify for that 10% credit. I don't know for sure, but I think there is that possibility. If you know about that, let me know in the comment section below. But it also appears like, based on the fact that Tesla is building out a cathode materials processing factory at Gigafactory Texas, and that seems to fall in the category of producing electrode active materials materials, it appears like Tesla will also get a 10% credit for producing their cathode materials at that factory as well. Now, one of the reasons why I believe Tesla is in a very unique position is not only due to the efficiency of manufacturing, once again, likely having a much lower cost or investment per gigawatt hour to build up these factories, but also Tesla has quite a bit of cash on hand. And even if you get these tax credits, it still takes a lot of cash up front to build these factories. In addition, Tesla also has a very low amount of debt as compared to other auto manufacturers. So when you put this all together, a lot of cash with low debt, this puts Tesla in an extremely strong position to be able to best take advantage of these credits. Now, so far I've mainly focused on how this benefits Tesla. And if you're a Tesla investor, of course, that's important to you. Um, however, if you're not a Tesla investor and you're just looking to purchase a Tesla vehicle, I believe this also will benefit the consumer quite a bit in the future as well, because as you lower the cost of batteries, that lowers the cost to produce a vehicle. And when you have a vehicle that costs less to produce, that makes way for lower cost electric vehicles, like for example, a much more affordable compact Tesla that's expected in the future. Now, when it comes to just how low Tesla's battery prices per kilowatt hour could go in the future with these credits um, calculated in, in Tesla's Q3 2022 conference call, Elon Musk made it very clear that they see a path of producing 4680 battery cells at a cost of around $70 per kilowatt hour. And that once again is before incentives. Now, of course, when it comes to building out a finished battery pack, you can't just look at the cell cost. You have to actually look at the cost of manufacturing the entire pack itself. 
According to Bloomberg NEF's data, in 2022, the average complete battery pack costs around $151 per kilowatt hour to build. Of that $151, $120 of that cost was for the cells and $31 of that cost was for the pack itself. So if we assume a pack cost of around $30 per kilowatt hour and a cell cost in the future of $70 per kilowatt hour, in the end, if Tesla is paying $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level for a finished battery pack, a $45 credit would equate to a 45% discount and could make battery packs and vehicles much more affordable, which could lead to cheaper Tesla vehicles. So as you can see, there is a huge potential for Tesla to benefit from the IRA manufacturing credits in the future. Now, the 4680 ramp has been much slower than expected, and Tesla still needs to prove that they can really scale 4680 battery production to meaningful levels. However, with Tesla's new Gigafactory Nevada expansion announcement and the small amount of space that Tesla is showing to be allocated for producing 100 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, it leads me to believe that Tesla still has a lot of confidence in scaling the 4680 battery in the future and the various manufacturing improvements that they mentioned back at Battery Day. At the end of the day, I have a lot of confidence in the Tesla team, and I believe it's only a matter of time before they figure all this out and start massively ramping their 4680 batteries at these facilities. And I believe we're going to see more factory announcements in the going future, more local US battery factories as they strive to get to that one terawatt hour of domestic production in the United States. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to once again thank Span for sponsoring this video and also say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.